and public participation. If there's anyone in the audience who wishes to speak, you have five minutes. You approach the mic, say your name and your community, and you have the five minutes. Seeing no one approaching. Oh, okay. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, my name is Douglas Wetmore. I'm a former resident of Lower Sackville, now residing on Ruland Street here in the South End. I'm the co-founder of the hashtag Move Forward Without Me movement, and last month I came here and brought up dozens of issues regarding the recent Halifax transit changes. Today I want to address a little bit more about the principles that the Moving Forward Together plan was created on, uh, based on the large-scale public consultation that was done in 2013-2014. In Section 1.6 of the Moving Forward Together plan, it specifies these as the key four principles increase the proportion of the resources allocated towards high ridership services, build a simplified transfer-based system, invest in service quality and reliability, and give transit increased priority in the transportation network. Section 2.1.1 of the plan elaborates on allocating resources specifically towards these new corridor routes and developing the success of the Metrolink services with the new express routes. However, the new Route 8 that was implemented uh, two months ago was less frequent than the previous had Corridor 80 and 81. On top of this, the express routes aren't servicing the same quality that the old Metrolink routes did, and there have been numerous complaints regarding the speed of the service and overall overcrowding. The last point mentions acknowledging the need of off-peak services. However, for many areas, frequency of routes has never been lower after changes were implemented. So where did this idea of a transfer-based network come from? During public consultation and labeled in Section 1.5.2 of the Moving Forward Together plan, citizens were in favor of a transfer-based network if and only if the frequency of connecting transit services is high the use of transfers make the total trip time faster, there is appropriate infrastructure so that passengers are comfortable while waiting for their transfer, and service is reliable so that connections are not missed. In practice, nearly more or less none of these points have been adequately met. 60-minute intervals between buses is not frequent enough for a transfer-based system to work. Few trips for many people have become actually quicker thanks to the help of a transfer. Some people do get a faster route thanks to the new express routes, but overall trip time has increased for many citizens across HRM. Section 5 describes the needed terminal and stop improvements, very few of which have actually been implemented, especially so with the new Burnside terminal we've seen in November and the already overcapacity Mumford terminal. In Section 2.4, it describes the needs for transit priority measures across the HRM in order for the plan to be successfully implemented. Section 7.1 and point .2 elaborate on immediate required transit priority measures along with many other short-term solutions that should have been identified before full large-scale implementations were made. Uh, especially considering the Bayer's Road Transit Priority Measure, the Moving Forward Together plan states that that was a key requirement in order for the success of the 1 and Route 8, which was already implemented despite this transit priority measure being done. Overall, something isn't working with the way this plan is going. When the 19 and 20 were, were replaced back in 2017 uh, with the new 9A and 9B, the frequency was increased the need to transfer at Mumford Terminal was removed, creating a direct trip downtown, essentially going against what the Moving Forward Together plan was trying to put forth. There were few complaints from citizens, ridership on the route increased, and there were no questions about it. It was an excellent change. Why aren't we seeing this positive change with other routes? When we brought changes to Lacewood, we tore apart the existing 2 and 4 and told citizens to transfer between the 30 and 2. Citizens are still struggling with that to this day. 
My question is, I'm certain Paul and Lisa are very aware of the issues with citizens and the amount of effort that they've put in in regards to helping citizens adjust with these changes or trying to figure out how to implement solutions on these changes that were supposed to give us solutions to long-asked questions. Unless I'm misinformed, Dartmouth and Coal Harbor is next on the updates list. We are about to tear apart, tear apart the Portland corridor that is established with the 59, 61, and 68 and replace it with the same thing we just implemented in Lacewood and Sackville, the five and transferring to 60-minute interval rural routes. My expectation is this isn't going to work again, and we're going to end up spending more time trying to fix these routes and assist, assist the citizens that are seriously impacted by this, as opposed to actually make impactful change. I lived in Sackville for 10 years. I took transit for four and a half. I had overall negative experiences, many reoccurring issues, and none of these issues were addressed November, and they were only made worse. I'm extremely lucky that I have the resources to move out and move somewhere where I can continue living my day-to-day -day life. My concern is that many other issues don't or won't have that resource when these changes get to them. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Uh, Lyle Mailman, 80 Majesta Avenue, Beaverbank, Nova Scotia. And uh, I'm here today with the long awaited petition, but it only took three weeks to do 1,200 names. So we're looking to bring the bus back to North Beaverbank, a service that was there for 30 years. What will it take? You've already received a petition of over 500 and community input during the consultation, consultation process when developing the Moving Forward Together plan. Transit has a long history in the whole community. David Merrigan, David Barrett, who was here last month, Peter Wilde and others worked hard to get the bus for Beaver Bank. Those volunteers put in their time and now volunteer hours are strained and operating rural community transit is not high on the priority list for a seven kilometer stretch of road. People have moved here knowing they had bus service. Isolation, isolating in our aging community is now multiplied for seniors. Staffing at our largest employer has been affected and will affect new hiring. Independence of seniors, like Bula Croft who came in here today, have been stripped away she said today was the first time she's been on the bus since November 25th. This wasn't supposed to happen for another year, but a software update made it happen. So what will it take? Volunteers in the community are running programs and events for its residents and operating municipal or provincially funded transit operation. Again, it's not high on the priority. An agreement was reached in July 1996 that Halifax Transit was taking over the bus service for North for Beaverbank Transit Limited. That paperback that paperwork was not found in the archives. Halifax Transit is qualified and is sorry. Halifax Transit is the qualified and equipped operator for Halifax for our area, with the human resources, training, operations, maintenance, occupational health and safety insurance and liability. Take a look at idle time of buses. The 86 is idling for 20 minutes at the Sackville Terminal at times. They are sitting for a half hour and 45 minutes on routes like the late night 82. You properly now no longer transport students to Monarch Elementary. Stock has finally lived up to their obligation after years of residents fighting for it. Buses are idling. The change can happen now with the motion at Regional Council. Excessive bus. This service is now lost to anyone who may need it. No new applicants. 
This is crippling to a community of North Beaverbank and families that need the service the most. Ivy Meadows Continuing Care Facility is the largest employer in Beaverbank with 100 employees, 50 plus residents, family, friends, and volunteers. Any new residents will not be able to use the Excessive Bus Service. The Excessive Bus Service will cease to exist when the applicants no longer need the service. It's kind of a morbid way of thinking. It's unfortunate. So the moving forward together plan, what can we do? The peak hour transit service in North Beaver Bank Council report, item number 1432, Helvick's Council, January 15th, 2019. This is the staff report that Councillor Blackburn requested. The staff report has been done. We know the solutions. There were five options for consideration. Staff recommended stopping the route to Kinsack Road. Options two, three, and four continue to level of service for the whole community as it has for 30 years. Option two, cheaper. Option three and four, not fitting the moving forward together plan criteria. But what needs to change? The community or the criteria of the plan? Um, I was, I did apply to do a presentation, but I can't show the slides of, but basically, if you look forward, if you look to that report, those five options, they're all within $200,000 of each other. The urban transit boundary. Criteria for the boundary follows the Halifax Water and Sewage Service. That's it. The Beaver Bank Community Center, where the bus now turns around, is outside the urban transit boundary and not on water services. The original building burned down in 2009, despite having a top-of-the-line sprinkler system that was served by a well. It was the only bus route that went to the Halifax border. Criteria for the boundary should include large employers in the community and accessibility to seniors' care facilities. We want the bus back. We talk about pedestrian safety downtown in the earlier agenda item. Residents now face a seven kilometer walk on unpaved, dimly lit shoulders with heavy quarry truck traffic numbering once at 98 trucks in a three hour period. Something they didn't have to do for 30 years. Are you soon finished, Mr. Mailman? Your time is up. Oh, good, because I'm, I'm done. Over a three-week period, hey, we got the petition. What can we do? So we have... It sounded like a final statement. Yeah, so it did, uh, but anyway, we got the petition, 1,200 signatures. We we're going to deliver to Deputy Mayor Lisa Blackburn today. We went door to door, taking the bus away. It was not okay. We want to access a bus. Will you bring it back? Make a motion. It's all it takes. We gave it to Councillor Blackburn, and she will present it to Regional Council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? None? Seeing no one approaching.